In the summer of 2020, as the country erupted in protests following the murder of George Floyd, my next guest wrote a widely shared New York Times essay called I'm a Black American, I Had to Get Out. In it, she reflects on her choice to leave the United States to return to her home island of Tobago. Now, in her powerful new memoir, Black American Refugee, Escaping the Narcissism of the American Dream, author Tiffany Drayton details her journey from the Caribbean to the U.S. and back again. She offers an unflinching look at how she decided to leave the land of the free in order to be truly emancipated. Joining me now to discuss this and much more is the author of Black American Refugee, Tiffany Drayton. Tiffany, welcome to Black News Tonight. It's an honor to have you on this show. Uh, congratulations on the memoir. I understand that it grew out of this New York Times essay. What inspired you to write that initial piece? That initial piece was inspired by a culmination of 10 years worth of writing about systemic racism and trying to educate the public to what the issues are and um, how it impacts them every single day. So by the time 2020 came around and George Floyd was murdered and everybody witnessed that um, widespread all over the world, I was like, listen, this is the moment to write a book. And I compiled all of my essays and the book was born. Now, your book, Black American Refugee, uh, it starts with the phrase, I write this from exile. Exile is a very provocative uh, word. Exile, you know, for some people means being a political prisoner. For some people, it's John on the island of Patmos in the book of Revelations. For some, it's people like Edward Said, you know, th these really passionate kind of radical voices from around the globe. Why did you use the word exile? What did it mean to you? Why did it resonate? Uh, why that choice? As you begin to study and understand systemic racism, you realize just speaking out against it can make you a target in the United States of America. And that's something that really sits heavy on my shoulders. It's a very heavy weight. I oftentimes wonder like, would I be safe in the United States of America? Is it safe for me to return there with my family? And the answer usually comes back, no. I don't wanna have to put myself in that predicament <laughs> for sure. I, I, can, I can imagine. And so, because the idea of exile suggests that you can't come back, right? Now, obviously, you legally can come back, but your point is about how the systems and the structures make it, I would imagine, an unsafe space for you. Well, talk to me a little bit about that sense of unsafety that you feel in the United States, uh, and if it's particular to certain sorts of folk, and by, uh, certain sorts of black folk in particular, uh, or if it's something that all black people have to wrestle with. Because the reason I ask is because the question for some will be, well, we, you know, we all can't leave, what do we do? Right, you see that sense of a lack of safety is really something that applies to everybody across the board at this point. We are seeing so much violence erupting every single day on television, there's more and more political dissension. And even with voter rights being under attack, the act of voting, right now in the next upcoming election can be a very dangerous thing for all black people and to the point of for those who cannot leave that's true not everybody has the option of somewhere else to go but once we recognize that we are under attack it means we have to unify it means we have to protect one another it means we have to seek out allies and it means we have to be doing the hard work to make sure that we are dismantling systemic racism and really keeping those people that are trying to attack us and and create violent situations under control. You refer a lot in your book to the American dream. Um, do you think uh, black immigrants uh, and U.S. born, I, when I say U.S. born, I mean descendants of, of slavery, do they have the same dream? Do they see the American dream differently? How, how do you see those dynamics playing? I believe all Americans have the same dream of equality. Ultimately, that's what this country was founded on this idealistic idea that everyone can come here and make a better life for themselves and everyone can aspire and achieve and all people are created equally and should have access to the same things right but we realize it doesn't yeah. even matter if you're black if you're white if you're you know um born in the country or an immigrant access to that ideal is just so difficult for most people and even really out of reach, especially for black people. 
that idea of equality is part of the American dream, right? And then there's this idea of mobility too, right? That if you work hard, you have a fighting chance mm-hmm. to have uh, a certain kind of life. That's a pa- that's a powerful idea, and it's, it would be great if we yes. all could do it. Um, it some slavery. people argue, and, and right, some people argue that the legacy of slavery though makes it particularly challenging for descendants of slaves, and that they have a different experience than say a continental African or then a uh, a Caribbean uh, immigrant who comes over here. I would say, and there are some mobility. diaspora wars that. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Upward mobility in the context of the United States of America, the highest rungs of the country are safeguarded for white people or people who can be absorbed into whiteness. So if you don't fit into that criteria, criteria, if you are not a wasp, if your um, family is not Italian, if your family is not German or or Irish who have been absorbed into this idea of whiteness, it doesn't matter where you are, um, uh, where you're from or what, what your descendants are, you will never be absorbed into whiteness, which will give you the ultimate access to first class citizenry. For, for sure. Uh, what do you see beneath that first rung, though? And the reason I'm asking, I'm pushing on this is a little bit because there have been so many diaspora wars uh, that have taken right. place on social media and in, and in the press around this, dis- this distinction between, you know, uh, people who are descendants of slavery and people who aren't. And the argument is, well, yeah, none of us are white and there's a way that we all get treated a certain way because we're black. But that the mobility piece and the aspiration piece is always tempered for descendants of slaves by this reality. Do you see any distinction there, or, or are you more comfortable using the broader rubric of blackness? Uh, is there any value in making a distinction? I think one of the big elements of my book is that it very distinctively uh, recognizes that this is a caste system and that people fall into that caste system in different rungs. And so I would never say blackness is a one size fits all situation. It is true that certain people enter into the United States of America in a different um, place, whether they come from their country with more access to resources and then immigrate, or they come to the country more poor. You know, we are not entering into the system in the same in the same rung. However, with that said, it's crucial that we recognize our fight is not amongst one another. Our fight is with the people who are keeping us all down. And once we unify behind that cause, we will recognize it to be um, more fruitful for us as a people. You left the United States uh, before the pandemic. Uh, you also left before the murder of George Floyd, which st- started, you know, which happened in May uh, of that first year of the pandemic. What was it like to watch those events unfold from outside of the United States? What was it like to be kind of the outsider looking in uh, during those just historic events? It was absolutely horrifying. And beyond that, you are so removed from the reality of the constantness of systemic racism when you're in another country. So you don't get that same, you, you can't go to people and say, you know, America's this terrible racist place, look at what's happening and, and get that kinship that you would here. Oftentimes in other countries, people are like, but it's not so bad, it's not so horrible. However, with that said, I would say that the George Floyd moment in 2020, you saw that narrative entirely flip on its head. And that's one of those things that was so interesting to me because finally the rest of the world was like, oh, no, 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 that is awful. And it was clear for them to see. And that was really powerful for me, um, both as a, as, a, as a black woman and as, as, as an American as well. It's like, finally, people are seeing the truth. What do you love most about what you get living outside of the United States? This idea of having freedom, having space. What What are the freedoms and the, and the opportunities, uh, the breathing room? What, what does it look like outside of the United States? Uh, it looks like, you know, just the constant policing of whiteness is so exhausting. Being outside of the confines of that, you just, you could go to the park with your kids and your kids run freely with other kids of color, with other black kids, and you don't have to second guess whether or not somebody's going to look at them a certain way because of their skin color or whether they're going to say you can't play with my kids or the kids are going to reject them, right? Um, I just always think back to my nephew, he's eight years old, running on the beach with like, like just this like gang of black boys, like 10 of them, and they're running up and down the beach with a football and there's nobody to police them. There's nobody saying you can't do that. There's nobody giving them a, 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 a like a side eye or a nasty comment. And it's just so liberating and beautiful to be in a space absent of the constant policing of white people. 
Wow, that sounds like a real freedom dream right there. Tiffany Drayton, thank you so much for joining us on Black News tonight. Uh, and congratulations you so on your spectacular new book. Everybody, make sure you check out the book again. It's called Black American Refugee, Escaping the Narcissism of the American Dream. And it is available wherever books are sold, but especially independently on black bookstores. Everybody, stay right here. We'll be back with more Black News tonight.